Alright, welcome back to the Performance Pyramid. And the last time I was talking about this, it was the active straight leg raise. And I went through with two different people, myself and Jenna. We could both get threes, but I was having trouble translating that pattern into standing. So when we broke it out, um, I had more of a hip impingement. I could not get my thigh to my ribs. It wasn't even close. Um, and she could, so she could go right into loading her hip hinge a little bit easier. I didn't have to work through the progression. So the first thing they talk about in the Performance Pyramid and the FMS is mobility before motor control. So you have to have the mobility. Now I had the mobility in the straight leg raise, but I was limited. So we broke it out, found a hip impingement. And now I'm gonna take you through one of the home versions of trying to work on hip impingement. Obviously a PT would be a great person to open up that front pinch. But what I'm gonna do right here is obviously I'm at home. I don't have a power rack at work. I haven't gone to work yet today. So I'm just gonna hook that up right there. When I get to work, I can use a power rack. We're just gonna step through this. Load this up in the hip right in there. Pull it away until I get distraction. And now I'm going to sit back. When I sat back before without the band, I could feel the pinch. This band distracts that and allows me to be able to glide into that hip capsule and sit back. So I'm going to do about 10 of these two to three times. So probably two to three sets of 10 rocking back into this. And then I'm going to take it into more of a supine. I like to go kneeling first, even though it kind of changes the pattern. You're supposed to go on your back first and then go into a quadruped position. But this actually allows some of its gravity, allows me to sit back in my hip and open this up. Next, I'm going to take you into the supine, supine version of ball knee rollings. All right, now that I've started to be able to open up the hip a little bit, I'm going to go on my back, which is actually reverse order, but this works better for me. So, so I'm going to first, I'm going to first kicking pattern activation, then knee in. So pattern activation, knee in. Pattern resisted. Here, hold. Here. Hold. Now the purpose of doing the activation first and following the 4x4 model is that I'm getting pattern assistance, which is actually activating some of the musculature that's supposed to work first, um, the nervous system kicking in the core. Then from that position I'm a little more stable, I can work on gliding the hip. The reason I didn't do this first is that when I do that first, I still feel a little pitch, pinch in the hip. When I sit back and do my first posterior rocking, it opens up my hip more that when I can go into this, I can handle the pattern better. So the first thing I'm going to do is sit back, and then I'm going to take this into this. I'm going to open up some more of my hip pattern now, and I can go back into my progression in the active straight leg raise, and I can handle it because I've added the mobility I need in the hip. Now I can tie back in the motor control, going through the 4x4 to get the active straight leg raise progression, and sit me back into a hip hinge pattern more naturally and quicker and more effectively.